an incredibly beautiful country. The scenery and the people, the truly an incredible spirit. Under the shadows of, of Everest, it's almost mystical and majestic. It's really, really quite special. Our core missions here is to bring technology partners together with humanitarian partners and local partners to make a difference. We all came to Nepal to help create maps of some villages that were really badly destroyed in the earthquake. And we put on a workshop at Kathmandu University. We had 28 engineering students. We taught them all how to fly and we taught them all how to create 3D maps using PIX4D software. The really simplified workflow of drone mapping is you program the area of flight that you want just using a simple grid. The drone will take off. It will do the image acquisition needed. Afterwards, you'll take the SD card out, you'll put it into the computer, put it into Pix4D Mapper software, and then the images are downloaded, they're processed, and you get the outputs that you need, 3D maps, models, and orthomosaic. And by creating maps, it really helps communities for the reconstruction of the environment. Now we have technology where we can actually go up and we can see things in detail. And so we can fly through buildings, we can fly around buildings, we can see the damages without putting people at risk. Kathmandu Living Labs had done some initial exploration about the drone imagery, but now we want to see you know, to what extent the drone imagery will be useful. My goal here is expanding people's imagination in terms of what is possible. It's incredible to be part of this shaping of this humanitarian technology space. All of you are at the, at the forefront of this. We wanted these technologies directly into the hands of our students and participants. We're going to start with very basics and work our way up to some fancier moves. If ever you feel like you're going somewhere that you don't want to go, you let go of the sticks and it will freeze. I never got the chance to take this sort of training before in Nepal. I think it's the first of its kind. Every student here in Kathmandu are now becoming mappers. It's not just a dream, it's a reality. The students led us to the village of Penga that got destroyed a lot during the earthquake. Together with the local community manager, we went on the rooftops to start the phantoms and mapping the area. The students' reaction was amazing. They were blown away when they saw that by a press of a button, they were mapping their areas. All right, so let's start to do some mapping. The whole flight is going to last for about five minutes, as written here. You can at any time go and abort the mission. The drone will fly back automatically here safely. Go, go, go. Yeah. We printed this very high resolution imagery on waterproof rollable banners. And importantly, it is a whole community collectively looking at the same map. People came from all directions and we gave them a stack of post-it notes. They started putting them on their houses, on the schools. So that was sort of an unexpected reward that we had was just to witness that event. This is a pretty large area, and there's hundreds and hundreds of, of buildings. Some are damaged, some are not. Even if you took a picture with a handheld camera, it would only capture a very small part of reality. So this gives them the full picture in one place where they can say, OK, that this place was actually more heavily affected than that one. In short, it's going to help them rebuild better, smarter, and faster. If this technology which has come I think it has a huge potential in countries like Nepal to use for a really good, good purpose. It'll be really exciting to see these results, to show the students that the data they've collected, that the maps they've produced has really had an impact in their country. When we came to this village, we were blown away by seeing all these magnificent monuments and magnificent temples, incredibly rare beauty. However, we also were very, very sad to see many of them destroyed. Our mission here was to help rebuild all this amazing cultural heritage. I came here expecting to create a story about damaged buildings, but really it's become a story about people. You see people in the streets volunteering, working together as families from maybe 90 years old down to 12 years old, all moving bricks one at a time by hand. So we're also becoming a little bit attached to the town of Ponga.